In this video, I'll show you a project I've been working on for some time. This is how to make your own binary wristwatch. The watch uses a multiplexed 4x4 LED matrix to show the time in binary coded decimal. More on how to tell the time later in this video. Using deep sleep, it can last for up to two years before needing a new battery. This was a challenging project, with the main reason being that a wristwatch gives a really small area to work with. Now, it would have been a lot easier to make the watch either really big, ugly, or with poor battery life. But that's not what I wanted to do. So let's get started. This video is brought to you by JLC PCB, where you can order your own PCBs manufactured for as low as $2 for 10 units. Go and upload your Gerber files to get an instant price quote, and choose your own specifications before placing an order. Now as any good electronics project, I started by pulling out my breadboard and prototyping. I put up a 4x4 LED matrix connected to an Arduino Nano. When the Arduino code could uh, adequately control every single LED, I simply removed the three LEDs that weren't necessary for telling the time later. Now with this simple proof of concept, I could start the circuit development. The size constraint was a challenge both while designing the PCB and the 3D printed watch body. The size also put some limitations on the battery size, which in turn meant all the components had to be selected for low power optimization. I went for a CR2032, also known as a coin cell or watch battery, which is fitting for this project. This is held in place with a SMD battery clip, which will be soldered on the backside of the PCB. The Atmega 328P is the same microprocessor as used in most popular Arduino boards. I use this processor with an 8 MHz resonator. The processor also has the ability to run on as low as 1.8 volts, which is necessary due to the coin cell voltage, sometimes dropping to 2 volts for relatively large loads like the LEDs. This also meant I had to switch to the internal oscillator later and clock it at 1 MHz. To match the 1.8 volts minimum, I chose the DS3231 RTC, which has a temperature compensated time crystal. The LEDs come in a 0603 package size, which is really tiny. I used current limiting resistors and due to the column scanning in the LED array, no more than three LEDs are drawing current at the same time. For this project, I really wanted everything to fit inside the diameter of a standard wristwatch body at 42mm. This then gives a glass diameter of 38mm. And if we add some tiny margin for mounting the PCB, this meant this could have a diameter of 35mm. Now, to make a callback to regular watches, I made the PCB round, like much watches are. Also, to make the PCB look as clean as possible, I put all the passive components on the bottom side, along with the battery and programming points. The front side has only the two necessary ICs, the ceramic resonator, and of course the LEDs. I ordered this PCB produced with a black solder mask to match the watch body and leather strap. When the circuit boards arrived in the mail, the first thing I did was to carefully scrape off the production number with a Epson USB-C connector. When soldering, I started with all the components on one side before doing the other, and I did all the components with the lowest profile first. To control the flow of solder, I recommend just going ahead and using a lot of liquid solder flux. Just remember to clean it afterwards. Flux can sometimes disturb sensitive signals when a circuit is powered, and this is not something you want for a processor's resonator. I carefully cleaned everything with a small amount of rubbing alcohol. The push button, which is really the only way to interact with the watch, needed some modifications. The button will be pressed by the watch crown instead of the standard plastic plunger. I carefully opened the button by snipping off the plastic rivets before removing the black plastic part. This metal disc needs to make contact between the button leads, and this was held in place by a tiny piece of tape I rolled up and put inside the button. With this in place, the button could be glued together again pressing the metal cover down while adding super glue. The unnecessary leads were removed and the button could finally be soldered at a right angle onto the PCB. When all of the components were soldered, the bootloader needs to be burned onto the microcontroller. Right now, all we have is a virgin chip that can't really interpret Arduino instructions. Now to do this, we need another Arduino to act as an ISP programmer. But first, open the Arduino IDE 
and install the microcore bootloaders. Paste the following URL into the preferences and install it through the Arduino Boards Manager. Now connect the following Arduino pins to the PCB through the ICSP wiring shown on screen. Upload the Arduino ISP example code to the Nano before selecting the proper bootloader settings. What's most critical to select here is both the brownout detection and the internal oscillator frequency. The ICSP wires can be pressed onto the programming points, but because I had to experiment a lot in this project, I just soldered female headers to these points. Now go ahead and select the option to burn the bootloader in the Arduino IDE. Wait for a short while and you should receive a success message. If not, the most likely culprit is the ceramic resonator. Resolder and re-clean this part and try again. With the bootloader in place, we can upload the code for this project. This process is mostly similar to any Arduino board, but first I inserted the battery so the RTC can keep the time. Connect a FTDI converter and upload the code using the same mini core settings from the bootloader. After the code has been uploaded, comment out the line that reads the computer time and upload once more to keep the time settings on the microcontroller. Finally, you can confirm that everything works by testing the button. Pushing the button while the watch is off will wake it and show the time for 20 seconds. Pushing it once more while awake will show the date. Now if you want to toggle between daylight savings time mode, just press the button 15 times while it's awake. At this point, the microcontroller, or the watch movement if you will, is finished. And I moved on to the design of the watch body. There are three parts that needs to be 3D printed. This is the watch ring, the watch body and the crown. These parts are screwed together to make re-accessing everything easier later on. The case was printed by an industrial service just because my 3D printer did not have a fine enough resolution to make the watch as smooth looking as I really wanted it. I glued the crystal glass to the watch ring with a line of super glue around the inside of the watch ring. While that was drying, I prepared the crown. This is the new plunger that will press and activate the push button. It was inserted and secured with a small piece of wire glued to the inside of the watch body. The screw nuts need to be held in place before the PCB is inserted. These are M2 machine nuts. I secured the PCB itself with some double sided tape just to make sure changing the battery is easier in a couple of years. The final step for mounting together the watch is to press down the watch ring before fastening it with screws. I went with 6mm long screws to not hit any components on the inside. So this watch is really starting to resemble a finished product. Let's just add a black leather strap to complete the look. And with that you have an awesome and stylish new watch. But wait, how do you read the time from it? As mentioned in the beginning of this video, the time is displayed in binary coded decimal. This means each time digit will be coded as its own binary number. So like any digital watch, we have the 2 hour digits and the 2 minute digits from left to right. Each row from the bottom to the top represents the values 1, 2, 4 and 8. So to tell the time, we simply sum each bit in a row upwards and keep that in mind while reading the time from left to right. This first image gives the time as 13.47 or 13 minutes to 2 o'clock and this second image shows the time as 21.59 or 1 minute until 10 in the evening. And now everything is complete. I hope you like this project. As always you will find written instructions, downloadable files and all the components and parts used in the video description. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. All of that stuff.